Welcome back. Uh, my name is Ron Edwards, and we're going to talk about uh, we're going to continue our talk about PowerShell Access Control. Uh, and this this one, this is going to be part two. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, how you can manage it with desired state configuration. Uh, about me again, you know, for the people that were already in here, they they already saw this, but I'm a PowerShell enthusiast, a, a, a quiet one. I don't tweet or blog very much, uh, but I, I do help run the Mississippi PowerShell User Group with Mike Robbins. I'm sure everybody here has met Mike. Uh, and, and I happen to be lucky enough to win the advanced category of the 2012 scripting games. So uh, what we're going to go over, um, we're not really going to cover you know, the definition of access control or anything. We, we did that in the last one. I'm, I'm really, uh, it's going to be a short set of slides where I, I talk about a couple of design considerations that I, I thought through before making uh, DSC resources. Um, and you know when I, we'll, we'll talk about what I did end up coming up with. Uh, right now, there's three resources. Uh, we'll talk about how to use them, and we'll demo them. So you know, a couple of considerations. The first thing that I, I thought of is, you know, what do you actually want to control? So you know, that security descriptor object has four parts: the owner, the group, the DACL, the SACL, uh, and you've also got the the inheritance of of the two ACLs. If you think of those as different things to control. <coughs> Uh, so, you know, do you want to do you want to control an entire security descriptor? Do you want to control just a specific ACL? Do you want to control, you know, do you do you basically not even care what an ACL looks like, but you just want to make sure that a certain principal has the ability to do something? They, you know, I know on this folder I want this user account to be able to write or to be able to delete files, uh, or I don't want them to be able to do that, or I want them to be denied that. So, you know, sometimes you only care about you know, you don't care about the rest of it, you just care that specific access is there or is not there or that it's being audited. Um, another big problem I came up with, so most of these resources were made in version three of my module, which, uh, it, you know, that's up on the, the TechNet gallery. Um, but, or I, actually all the, the resources are there. But for that version, I didn't take inherited a, uh, ACEs into account. If you did something with one of the resources, it was completely, it was going to check to make sure that was an explicit ace, and that was that. It, it completely ignored inherited aces. And that's because, you know, that's, there's kind of, a, the, the big problem with it is, what do you do if you find an inherited ace that, you know, if you find one that, that puts you in compliance, great. There's not a problem there, and if that inherited ace ever goes away, you know, when it converges again, it will put that back. But what happens if you have something that's being inherited that breaks that compliance? How do you then go in and fix it? Do you... You know, you, you, you basically have uh, a resource that's saying, I want this folder or this file or something like that to look this way. And then it comes back and says, well, it doesn't look that way, and I'm going to have to go to your parent to fix it. So, I mean, what I'm doing right now in, in version 4 is you, you basically opt into that check. Um, you know, so it, it says this on the page before you go to download it. This is all experimental. This could change. I may change it so that you don't opt in to the inherited check. You may have to opt out at some point. Um, so, um, and, and I also decided to, it just doesn't fix it. It, it writes a warning, um, and you know, it, 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 it'll show you that it's not in compliance. And if somebody can go in and manually fix it later, then when it converges again, it will be in compliance. So, uh, you know, here's a link to the module. Uh, at some point I plan to have it, uh, up on GitHub, all the source code and all that good stuff. Um, but right now you can download a copy from the TechNet gallery. And there, like I said, there are three DSC resources. Uh, you've got one called uh, Access Control Entry, one called Security Descriptor, and one called Security Descriptor SDDL. We'll cover those in a little bit more detail. So the first one, uh, the C Access Control Entry resource. So that covers that scenario I was talking about where you, you don't care what the rest of the security descriptor looks like. You just care that either the DACL or the SACL contains or does not contain or audits uh, a certain ace, you know, certain permissions. So uh, you can't say, you can't touch the owner with this resource, you can't touch whether or not inheritance is enabled or disabled. All you care about is that a specific ace is there or not. Uh, there's a, a, it actually has a bunch of parameters so that, uh, you know, I didn't pick up a whole bunch of stuff. I can I put that last one that says, you know, these are parameters shared with the, with the new pack access control entry commandlet. But there's a path which is going to obviously identify the object that you want to uh, secure. You have an object type, and right now I'm artificially limiting it to, it doesn't work with everything that the rest of the module works with. Uh, Active Directory objects are definitely out on this one. Uh, during the, the hackathon the other day, I started working on uh, and one that's gonna be for access control entry, and it's just gonna be a separate resource. Um, and you know, I may duplicate 
I may have three separate ones for Active Directory objects. Right now it works with files, folders, uh, services, WMR namespaces, and uh, <coughs> registry keys. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, and I think that's all I've got it working with right now. There's not really any reason that it shouldn't or that it wouldn't work with the other ones. It's just I, I, you know, I want to test stuff before I put that back in. And by the way, again, another disclaimer, if you use any of these, test them extensively in a test environment. You know, this is all experimental preview stuff. So there's an insurer, so that's the, you, you insure present or absent. It's going to default to present if you don't define anything. Um, specific. So we didn't really get a chance to cover in the, in the, previous, uh, the previous presentation specific, but the, the, the remove access control entry commandlet has this concept of, you know, do you want to just remove, like if you have an ace and you say I want to remove delete access, but do you want me to remove an ace that says just delete, or do you want me to just make sure that you can have whatever you want there, but the delete right is not present? Specific is what controls that. If you say I want to make sure that this user has right access. If the user has full control and specific is set to false, great, I, I'm happy. You know, I, I'm not looking for a specific ace that grants delete to the folder, subfolders and files. I'm just looking that delete is there somewhere. If specific is true, then it must match exactly. And the reverse is true when you're telling it ensure is absent. It will, uh, if you say specific is false and you say remove delete, then if you have full control, you're gonna be, you should be left with full control minus delete. And you know the, the the applies to I'm kind of glossing over that, but you know that stuff would have to match as well. Test inherited aces. That's the property I was talking about, where you would have to opt in by default. It's going to assume that's false if you don't set it. And any of these resources where you tell it I want something to be set there, it will completely ignore inherited aces and it will do it all explicitly. Uh, we'll cover that in the demo. And then you have the the things that you know talk about what how you want the access control entry to look. <coughs> We've got things like the uh, the ace type, allow, deny, or audit. Sure. Question? On the uh, test impaired aces, I was wondering if it would have to be set to false to get it to be set 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 to um, for the test inherit aces, if we find an ace that's being inherited that breaks the, the compliance, can't we just, instead of fixing the parent, can't we just disable ACL inheritance on that and then make everything explicit and fix it? The answer is yes, you could actually do that. Uh, and so for the C access control entry, that would work fine. The other resources actually let you define that ACL inheritance, though, or, or whether or not the uh, ACL inheritance is set. Um, so you know you could end up with a situation where you want inherit inheritance set, and then you want these four access control entries, and then or you want an inheritance enabled, and you want these four access control entries, and then one that's being inherited kind of breaks that. Well, at that point, you've said you want the ACL inheritance enabled. So, but but yeah, for the C access control entry, you know that is uh, something that could be changed for that. Um, I mean, all of this stuff is open up, and and I'm sure a lot of you guys would actually have uh, ideas. For ways to make this better this stuff is by I don't use this nearly as much uh, as I use the other stuff so you know if you guys have uh, <coughs> suggestions or ideas yeah, I'm definitely open to hear them because um, there, there are a lot of ways this could be improved so but yeah right now it doesn't do it but that was a good question thank you so um, I think we're so yeah the ace type allow deny or audit the principle the access mask and for that you do have to Give it something that's kind of numeric, but remember we have the helper function, the new pack access mask, so we'll see that in a little bit. You can use that. Uh, your applies to, so if you're working with an, some kind of a, an object that exists in a hierarchy, like a folder or a registry key, that's when you control, you know, will this apply to the folder, subfolders, and files, or just to the folder. Uh, but you, you don't get to use those friendly names. You have to use things like object, child container, and child object. And the audit flags, if it's for an audit ace, you have to specify audit flags, either success or failure. So let's uh, let's demo real quick this resource. So if we look here, uh, let's make sure that all this is imported. So I'm going to use, I'm not going to use DSC to set up the uh, prerequisites and things like that. But so we set set our environment up real quick, so that we ended up, and we'll take a look at the you know, the, the folder and stuff that we're going to be working with here in just a second. We'll look at it before we try to 
actually start this configuration. But you'll see that I have, for this <laughs> configuration, uh, there's basically, there's four access control entry uh, definitions in here. So this one is set so that it's going to, if you look, uh, we want to ensure, so it's present, so we want to make sure that this ACE exists in some form. The path, you know, that's, that was defined up above. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. It's going to be the same path for all of these uh, resources, resource definitions. Uh, you have an ACE type. So this time we want to make sure, uh, I'll just go through this quick. We want to allow users the ability to modify. So remember, access mask really wants to be in like an integer or something like that. This helper function is going to return an enumeration which will be co coerced into an integer. So, you know, we're saying we want to allow users the ability to modify. Uh, and the object type is going to be a directory. We did not specify applies to, uh, and I'm actually starting to think applies to may eventually become a required parameter, but right now it's not. So it's defaulting to, you know, you didn't, tell, you didn't give me anything specific. I'm going to default to applying to the folder, subfolder, and files. So this next one, uh, ensure is present. This is a deny ace. We want to make sure that there is an ace that denies users the ability to delete. And if you notice, applies to as object, so that should apply only to the folder. We have another ace that uh, this one should be absent. So this is one where we're looking to make sure that, a, that something does not exist. And this one we want to make sure that the everyone group cannot uh, delete. So yeah, this is different from the deny on the last one. This one we're looking for the absence of that being allowed. And finally, we're going to do an audit ace. So we want to make sure that uh, that the everyone group is being audited for everything, for all failed accesses, essentially is what that is saying. So let's come in here, let's collapse that and run it. We will compile the moth. And um, this little pack SD option is kind of a, a shorthand way. We want to look at the audit, the, the SACL as well. So uh, you know, this is something that we covered in the previous session but get pack access control entry. So this is the before view of this thing. Um, yeah, that inherited from is kind of making everything wrap. It looks a little ugly. But you can see we have only inherited aces. There are no explicit aces. Uh, right now, so that's what it looks like. Let's run that configuration. And you'll see that when we're done, so now that's what we look like. So I have, I have some little reminders here. So the first, the first one we defined said that users needed to have modify rights. Well, users already had modify rights. They were being inherited. But remember, we didn't do test inherited ACEs, so it just ignored that. Now users have modify rights right there. All right? So uh, let's change. You know, we'll, we'll walk back through the other things. But what happens if we take this and change that user's modify rights that's explicitly defined? to full control. So if we do that, you'll see that you know now users have full control rights, right? And we told it in the, the actual definition that we wanted them to have modified, but we didn't say specific. So let's test the DSC configuration. You'll see it comes back, it's still compliant. And the reason it's still compliant, uh, it's because you know we said we wanted to make sure they have modify rights. They do, they have full control modifies included in that. Since we didn't specify specific, it's happy with that. It has no problem keeping that. So the second thing that we, we would de <coughs> we defined was that users needed to have a deny right for delete and it needed to apply only to the folder. As you can see up here, we've got that. It applies only to the object, only to the folder. Uh, the third thing that we were checking for was that everyone did not have delete rights. Well, when we started, everyone had no access explicitly defined or inherited. So yeah, we met that condition just fine. So what happens when you add, uh, in this command, you know, we're gonna take that folder, we're gonna give uh, an allow ace to everyone for full control, right? So let's run that. That's what we end up with. So you can see everyone has full control. Let's test that DSC configuration again. So now it's mad, we get false back. You know, we said you cannot have Everyone cannot have delete rights. So let's run. Let's start the configuration again and take a look at what we end up with. 
So now you see everyone still has rights on there. We don't care that they have rights. We just wanted to make sure they can't delete from just the folder. So you can see this is very similar to the scenario we walked through in the previous uh, session where everyone now has two aces. Instead of the one full control ace, they have two aces. That first one over there, the, the first one that's highlighted, uh, you know, all that crap that's listed under access mask, that's, a, that's full control minus delete. And you can see that that is set to apply to the, the folders, subfolders, and files, this, this uh, object, child containers, and child objects. And everyone still has delete rights, but you notice the O is missing under applies to. That's for the folder itself. We told it we don't want them to have the delete uh, right for the folder. So the DSC configuration fixed that for us. So, and then the last one, you know, we were, we were looking for uh, an actual SACL to be set. And as you can see there, uh, you know, again, we're in the same boat where test inherited ACEs wasn't set. So it didn't care that that ACE, that uh, uh, audit ACE already existed. It made one for us, right? So let's start over. This is uh, going to basically remove all that stuff that we just did. So we're back to only our inherited ACEs, right? Let's take a look at another configuration. Let me expand that out. So this should be the exact same thing that we just did, except for each one of them, we're gonna set specific to true, and we're gonna set in test inherited ACEs to true. Otherwise, well, it's not exactly the same, I'm sorry. It, there's, uh, there's two things. So we are, we're doing, uh, we wanna make sure that users can modify and right now this this is kind of this having to do this modify and synchronize to make it match exactly that that will go away in a future version you will be able to just say modify but right now you do have to put the synchronize right in there but in this case we're not look full control won't meet this requirement you must have modify and synchronize because we're setting specific to true but if it's inherited that's fine because test inherited aces is true and then this one is similar to the the everyone can't delete uh, that was in the previous one but again, we're looking for it to be specific. And uh, if, if that is being inherited, this is basically the, the opposite of the other one. If we were inheriting a delete, that would cause this to fail. So let's take a look. Let's run that, compile them off. Uh, one more time before we run it, let's take a look at what it looks like. So let's run it now. So if we take a look, oh, it's exactly the same as it was. We didn't have to create any explicit ACEs. Remember we said users need to have modify synchronized. They do, it's being inherited. We also said you, uh, everyone cannot delete. Well, they can't. So uh, this, uh, this one here is an audit ACE. So that's basically saying, well, even if this was allowing everyone to uh, full control, that wouldn't have matched that ACE specifically. So, or exactly. So it still would have been happy with it. So. Let's go ahead here and add, let's give users full control like I was just saying. I, I kind of gave the, the secret away though. So if you look, everyone now is explicitly allowed full control, right? And we're filtering this time, I told it to, um, it, it's not showing the, the actual SACL, so that's why there's just three still. But if we test the configuration, it still comes back true, like I said. Everyone can have full control. We said we want to make sure everyone doesn't have a specific ace that grants uh, delete well, that way. So what happens if we go in and play with the parent folder? So we're going to split path on that folder we've been looking at. We're going to call add access control entry to give everyone the delete that we were talking about. And we're going to have this one apply to child containers and direct children only. Uh, this, this is basically telling it so that the thing that inherits it, it's going to apply just to it. It's not going to apply to any of its children. So let's run this. If we take a look at that, you can see that now everyone does have that, exp uh, it's not explicit, it's inherited, but everyone does have that ace that applies just to the folder and then uh, grants delete and synchronize rights. So if, if we do a test, it should come back as false, it does. Let's go ahead and tell it to fix it. Uh, we got a warning. So, you know, it, it can't fix that as of now. You know, uh, we, we could potentially make it go in and disable ACL inheritance and, and just preserve the existing ACEs. That would be uh, one option. But as of right now, it, it, you know, it's, it's just gonna write a warning, it can't fix it. So that is 
the access con access control entry resource. Anybody have any questions about that before we move on to the next one? Sure. Did, did you say if it was uh, available for version four WMF or is this five only? No, this actually, uh, the DSC, so this works in PowerShell 3. The DSC stuff obviously doesn't. The, the, the DSC resources are part of a module that I've made. So the module itself works in version 3. Uh, the, these DSC resources were actually written uh, a good, you know, the, the early versions of them were written a long time ago, so they're not, not using the class-based stuff. So this actually should work in version 4 just fine. What's that? Yes, yes, this module, uh, so the target machine would have a requirement for this. Uh, and it's my understanding, I'm, I'm by no means a, a DSC expert, it's my understanding if you're doing the push configuration, it would be on you to make sure it's there. If you're doing a pull configuration, then you know the, the actual server should be able to handle that dependency for you. Okay, that, is that because both the, the, the helper functions and the DSC are in the same module? Yes, exactly. So, oh, and the question was, I'm sorry, was, uh, is, would the module be dependent? Uh, would the target machine have a dependency on the module? So let's move on then to the uh, C security descriptor resource. So this one, you know, this doesn't control just access control entries. This can control any part of a security descriptor: the owner, the group, the the DACL itself, the SACL, and also the inheritance for both of those ACLs. <coughs> um, when you define something in it, it's only going to care about the parts you define. So if you define a, re uh, a configuration that says this thing right here's owner must be this, it doesn't care what the other parts look like. It only cares about what you've defined. So uh, it's going to have some parameters. The, the first three are going to be exactly the same. You, these three parameters uh, exist on all of the resources. So you know I'm not going to cover those very much. Same limitation on the object type. And then you know the owner and group, uh, those are going to be uh, you should be able to use uh, string representation. Uh, you should be able to put a security identifier in there if you'd like. Um, but basically, I, th I think they, they technically take strings, but the, the actual resources will take care of converting those, if possible, into the uh, proper principles. And then there's an access and access inheritance property and an audit and audit inheritance property. So those inheritance properties are going to be true or false. I'm sorry, they're uh, enabled or disabled. Is the, or the valid values for those. And the access and audit properties are CSVs uh, of how you want these to look. And it's very forgiving, maybe a little too forgiving. You kind of have to look in the help to see what's allowed on what it allow you to put the headers. We'll cover that in just a second. Well, right now, actually, I guess. So if we take a look at C Security Descriptor demo up here, let's read all this stuff in. Don't tell anybody I'm not using DSC to do this. <laughs> all right. So our first configuration is going to do uh, exactly what I was just saying, that it only cares about what you define. So this one, we're just going to say the owner must be the administrator's group. So you know we're, we're giving it a path, and we're telling it the object type is directory. So let's come up here and run this. Compile them off. And let's go ahead. I'm not sure what the owner is. Actually, let's see what the owner currently is. So the current, the owner already is uh, administrator. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's take ownership of that. Take a look. And of course, yeah, I'm, I'm actually using the administrator account. Notice there's no S there. So the administrator's group is not currently the owner. If we run that configuration, you'll notice that it comes back. And there we go. The owner was changed. Um, I have a little bit of code here, you know, where I think I play around with the DACL a little bit and show that it really doesn't care. We'll skip over that. It really, this configuration only cares that the owner is administrators. You can do whatever you want, whatever else you want to that security descriptor. So this so one, sorry, sure, as, as applies to everything that you defined in your DSC resource. Yes. So, so did the owner and some other property would just care those. Two. Well, the, yeah, the other properties were basically telling you how to get to it. So they weren't security descriptor sections. So the other properties that I had defined were path and object type, I believe. Uh, so this next one is going to be, it's. No, so this is kind of where I was going to. So if you define access. It then it cares about it. Yes. Yes. So this is a new configuration. And this one, uh, we're still putting owner, must be administrators in there. You'll have to take my word. I'm not going to show that anymore, that it would fix that if you changed it. 
but now we're putting uh, access in there, right? I didn't mean to collapse that. So you can see, you know, this is a real simple CSV. You got principal, you got folder rights, and there's nothing else. And so what this is doing, if we were to do an import, or actually this would be a convert from CSV, I hope. Yeah, so, you know, we, we get a CSV there. If you pipe that, uh, again, I hope, I didn't actually plan to, this wasn't something I decided I was going to, I just did this on the fly. Hopefully, though, you send that through to new pack access control entry, and that, let's uh, format table on that. So what this is doing, the CSV just really has to work for this. Whatever you define there, you have to be able to get a valid access control entry out of it. Principal and folder rights are really all that's required for that commandlet. Uh, if you don't provide an ace type and you don't provide audit flags, it's going to assume that you want an allow ace. If you don't sp specify applies to, it's going to look at, uh, in this case we had folder rights, so it says, hey, you know, this is for the file system. Uh, it's for a folder, so I know that it should be object, child containers, and child objects. So this one is really short because you're taking a lot of that stuff, uh, you know, you're letting it do the defaults. So this is, we're saying we want four aces to exist. We want an ace that grants, all of these are, are allows. We want an ace that allows everyone read and execute. We want one that allows administrators full control, and we want one that allows system full control and users read and execute. So, collapse that down, run it, compile the MOF. Let's take a look before we run anything. So you'll see here, and remember test inherited aces was not set there, so this is going to ignore inherited aces. Right now, we have two inherited aces. That's it. We were defining four aces earlier. So if we run that and take a look at what we have, well now we have six aces. We have the four explicitly defined that we said we wanted. And note here that you know we already had inherited administrators full control. So you know this is kind of redundant here. We had users modify. Uh, well, actually, users had modify. Uh, we were looking for read and execute. So, but we're not looking at inherited aces, so everything is happy. Let's see what happens, though, when we take the exact same configuration. So, owner administrators, if you look, you have the exact same CSV there. But this time, test inherited aces is true. So, let's compile that and run it. You can immediately see we just got a warning message. Why did we get a warning message? Well, we got a warning because we said we wanted the DACL to have four aces. We wanted everyone and users to have read and execute. We wanted system and administrators to have full control. We're almost there, but we're not quite there. If you look, we have, instead of four, we have five aces. One of them is inherited, so this administrators, notice there's only three that are explicitly defined. The administrator's full control didn't have to be explicitly defined because it's already being inherited. But this user's one here, that's, that's what's messing it up because users is only supposed to have read and execute. We're only supposed to have four aces. Right now, we have five. That's a problem. So, and you know, as of right now, I haven't quite decided how, uh, how it would be fixed. So right now, it just gives you a warning message and it's on you to go fix it. If you were to do test DSC configuration, it's mad, you can't do anything about it. But what happens if we come in and we change, so where users has modify rights right there, let's go in, we're gonna do split pass, so that says take me to the parent, and let's take that users ace, and you know this add access control entry, this overwrite switch, means take whatever user's already allowed to do, because it's an allow ace, and just overwrite that. So we'll run that. And you'll see, so now things are looking a little bit better. We're inheriting this read and execute ace. So that should make everything happy. The only thing is, we remember the, the configuration said we needed four aces. Right now we have five. So if you run the test, you'll see that it's, it's still false. It's still not uh, compliant. If you were to manually delete that explicit users, then the test configuration would be happy without rerunning the, the start DSC configuration. But we'll go ahead and let the DSC, uh, the LCM, fix it for us. So if you take a look, all right, now we're down. We have our four aces. And so 
you know, the, the big thing to note here, I guess, is that with test inherited ACE is set to true, the C security descriptor resource doesn't care where it gets the ACE. It's just at the end of the day, it needs to have, if you were to just remove that inherited from, so select ACE type uh, principal, that'll, that should be enough, access mask applies to. At the end of the day, if you look at what it's supposed to be set and what it currently is, as long as this part matches, it's happy. And remember, if test inherited aces is false or not present, then it you know it would just ignore any inherited aces and make everything explicit. So, I believe. Oh, okay. Apparently, I did have a couple more things. There's also some stuff if you if you walk through these when you get this source material. Uh, I also kind of go over some registry keys and stuff like that. But uh, let's look at, uh, this one's going back to the one where test inherited aces was false. So the one we had already defined is the same, we, same thing we were just looking at, but test inherited aces is false. So run this again. Okay, and yeah, this is basically just showing again. I, I, I did mention it. It's that, hey, test inherited aces is false, so I went ahead and just put those four aces back there again. It's, it's as if when it's checking it, it just drops off anything that's being inherited. So that's about it for this resource. Any questions or suggestions? All right. So we'll move on to the last one. And this one's actually going to be pretty short, only because it's, a, it's very close to being the exact same thing as the other one, except you provide how you want it to look differently. So is anybody familiar with SDDL, the Security Descriptor Definition Language? It's, it's really uh, it's hard to read. It's hard to work with. But it's really, really good at representing a security descriptor in a really short form. So this thing lets you control exactly the same stuff, almost, uh, except the set, everything specified by this, uh, you know, through this string that is very, very, very hard to interpret. You know, if you're looking at it with your eyes. So the one big difference is, remember, in the the last resource. It, it basically just it ignored the flag that said whether or not the ace was inherited. SDDL, when you specify an SDDL string, each ace that's defined in there, and we'll take a look at a str one of those strings in a minute, it, it says whether or not that ace is inherited. So it's almost like if we, if, if we had made the security descriptor resource that we just showed, it's almost like if in that CSV, you know, we had a column that said is inherited. And I'm, to be perfectly honest, I, that might not be a bad idea to do something like that, to where that resource had the ability to say, you know, I want the DACL to look this way, and oh, these better be inherited. Right now, it can't do that, but this one can, and that's just because, uh, you know, the SDDL says whether or not each ace is inherited or not. And and I'll cover what that means a little bit more in a second. the The parameters are really easy. You have those same three that we had on the other two: path, object type, and test inherited aces. And you you provide the actual security descriptor with one input: SDDL. It does still share the part about if you only define certain sections, then it only cares about those. SDDL will let you have a valid string that only defines an owner or only defines an owner and a DACL or, or defines all four, if you'd like. So let's go into the demo for that. One second. All right. So... up just to make sure everything looks good so here you know we're going to kind of do the same thing that we did on the previous we have one that just defines an owner this one is I, I think I can explain this one without having to use a, a little helper commandlet so this is saying that O colon means this is the owner BA is a, is a, a shorthand way of saying built-in administrators so it's the same exact test that we did the last time or the same configuration we did the last time just using this security res or this DSE resource here, we only care that the owner is built-in admins. So compile them off. Uh, let's set, uh, this time it looks like we're setting the owner to the users group. So if we look at that security descriptor, we should see the owner is users. So if we run the DSE configuration and get the security descriptor, you'll see now the owner is administrators. Nice. So this time we're going to do one that sets the owner and the DACL. Now, if you look at this, 
So like I said, that's this is a, a really short one too. That's kind of tough to read. I mean, you can see this part's telling you the owner, and then this D colon is saying this is the DACL. Uh, here are some flags uh, you know, that, that apply to the DACL itself. And then each one of these, that's an ace. And that's an ace. This is really, really, you know, obviously hard to read. But it's a good form to have something, you know, if you want it kind of short, you know, uh, it, it, it accurately represents a security descriptor. We're going to take a look at what that means in just a second. I'm going to briefly cover the configuration definition, though. Like I said, it's very simple. We, we're defining the path and the object type, which are required. Test inherited aces is not being set. So this is going to do the same thing where it just ignores. And, and the difference here is, if you, if you give it an SDDL string that has inherited aces, when it tries to go and look at everything, it's going to mod like when it has its, it's a, when it goes to compare what cur the current configuration is with what the desired configuration is, it's in both of those strings going to just act like inherited aces did not exist. So if any of those aces that are in those parentheses had the flag that said they were inherited, they're just going to be lopped off that string when it does the comparison. So let's... Let's take a look at what that actual STDL string means. So there's a there's a commandlet in, in the module called new pack security descriptor. And you you all you really need to provide it is this STDL parameter. You can also do it if you have a binary form, you it'll take that. Uh, and this time around so that it shows, so that it properly shows uh, the actual what the, the numeric access mask means. We tell it it's a file object. And this also, since, since this is a folder, you have to do the is container. Otherwise, it treats a file a little bit differently. Uh, it would, so, so we create that, and we get this security descriptor that looks just like we called git pack security descriptor. I mean, you'll see like up here, path is unknown, group is unknown. Um, but if you call just the access property, or if you run git pack access control entry against it, you'll see Okay, so this looks familiar. This is, all right, we have four explicit aces. So th this is doing the exact same thing that our uh, second configuration did in the previous demo. We have four aces. Everyone in users have read and execute. System and administrator have full control. And they're all explicit. None of them are inherited. So let's do the before and after again. So right now we have uh, on this on this folder, we have two inherited aces. We're going to start the configuration, and we're going to take a look. And I mean, same thing. So, you know, this um, it's going to be. There's not much more to show you because I mean, this literally is. It does the exact same thing as the last one, just in a different way. Well, almost the exact same thing. So, um, let's see what happens with the test inherited aces, though. So, if we set it to true, so this is. You'll have to take my word for it that. Well, I mean, it's the same variable, so this stdl owner dacl test stdl string. And we are going to run that and compile them off. So let's run it now. Uh-oh. So we got a warning, and let's take a look at what we're left with. So it's upset because, you know, we're, we're testing inherited aces, and again, we specified four, four aces that must be explicitly defined. Those are, but it's inherited in those two access control entries. And also in this case, I didn't mention this. So for this one, that STDL string to define the DACL, it, it did also have to include whether or not it was enabled, uh, inheritance was enabled or disabled. In this case, the flag specified that inheritance is enabled. So this would be, you know, another instance. For this one, we can't just disable inheritance. Uh, but again, it, I think that would work for the access control entry resource. So for this one, we, we need a way pretty much to change the parent. And that's what, let's see, what is this guy doing? So, so this is going to uh, get all of the inherited, I mean, all of the explicit aces for the parent. And uh, this is basically going to wipe out everything. And then it's going to go through later so that we still have a little bit of access. And uh, let's see, this is going to copy. Oop, not access right type. We're looking for access. So it should put all of these on the parent. Let's take a look. And DSC SDDL test folder. Get pack access control entry. So yeah. So 
So now, right now, so right now we're looking at, you know, we basically copied that. We have four uh, inherited aces that are exactly the same as the four explicitly defined aces. So, you know, obviously we would get a warning if we ran that. Um, there probably was something else I meant to kind of convey here because this looks, but if we remove all that, you know, now we don't have any inherited aces. Without rerunning the start DSC configuration, we can run test and test will come back and say, oh, okay, I'm good. You know, we didn't have to rerun everything. It was just, it took somebody coming in and fixing it themselves. So finally, this is going to show you, we're getting short on time, so we're going to, uh, let's see. No, oh, so in this one, we, oh, I, I output it. I had it output uh, the ACES two times. So this time around, we did go ahead and disable ACL inheritance. And remember, the SDDL specified that ACL inheritance had to be enabled. So if you look here, DACL inheritance is disabled currently. And if we come in here and run this configuration, inheritance is enabled again. And you know, since we weren't inheriting anything, it was happy, it could fix everything, it got rid of all that extra stuff. So let's do uh, one more. It looks like this is for uh, a sackle. I think, I don't know why I use this. Oh, okay, yeah, we're getting into the, a registry key anyway. So, uh, I mean, we can, we can go ahead and walk through this. Unless anybody has any questions, uh, this is basically, you know, we can look at what this is trying to do. Um, so if we do a new pack security descriptor, SDDL is owner DACL test string, ignore the name of the variable. Uh, the object type is a registry key, and I think it would set is container automatically for that one, but I'm not positive. So you can see we we want to let's look at the uh, audit property. So this one we're basically saying that these two entries should not be inherited. We want to audit uh, all failed accesses for everyone, and we want to audit successful deletes for everyone. So if you look at what it's currently set to. There's no ACEs, right? There are no audit entries currently. So if we run this, now we have the two audit entries. Nice. So, uh, any questions? So if there's no questions, I will, I'll show you. There's honestly and truly, I, I have no idea if this is even going to work. But on Monday, we had the DSC hackathon. So I talked with uh, Ashley, Mag Ma Ashley McGlone and Steve Murawski. And uh, we kind of got something together that almost works with Active Directory stuff. So if I edit C program files, Windows, PowerShell, modules, um, DSC resources, and I didn't mean to open them off as well. But we have, this is kind of what it, what it might look like if we get this working later for how to configure Active Directory objects. And again, this is one of those things where it'll probably be a long time before I'm ever telling anybody I'm comfortable with them running something like this. But if you got a test machine and you don't mind what happens, then, then have at it. Um, and this is actually not or the example. To your code. Yes, uh, once I get it up on GitHub. So I meant to go into, I need to move these examples under the DSC folder itself. But I did not mean to show the definition of the thing. I meant to actually show something that will use it. So. For this, you can see, um, let's collapse that. What we're going to try to do here is, um, where is it? Right here. So you know, obviously, this is this. The, the user had better exist. I'm not putting any kind of like uh, anything to, to make sure to create it or anything like that. But we have some of the same things. Ensure uh, instead of path, we have a distinguished name. Ace allow, uh, and this time we want to, for this one we're going to give an extended write. We're going to actually try to give somebody the ability to reset a password. So this is kind of an example of Active Directory is very, very granular with what it, it will allow. So, and this should be for the limited user. So let's real quick look at, at uh, get AD user, limited user, and we're going to get pack access control entry. Uh, we're looking for Active Directory writes, extended write, and we're looking for any object ace type it has the word password in it. So this should show us, and actually we're gonna do this for everyone. So there's, yeah, hold on, let me 
specific. So right now, you can see that everyone has change password and self has change password. Um, and you know the, the administrators have the ability to do, uh, do all extended writes so they can reset password as well. So if this works, this is going to, when we run this the next time, we should see that everyone has reset writes. All right? Like I said, this might not work. I probably shouldn't run it, but. And it's gonna prompt me for credentials. And pretty sure y'all saw the password that was there a second ago in that comment. That's fine. And when we, yeah, so we just ran that. And let's go to this. Where did I do? Okay, yeah, there's the output path. So start DSC resource or DSC configuration, wait, verbose. Cross our fingers. And it does take, what it's going to have to do is take those credentials and it wraps them in an invoke command. So, and it's going to have to do that twice. It has to do it for the test and then again for the set. So, this part you'll notice is a ton slower than the other one. If uh, the LCM was, if I could just get it to run and it's in the, the context of the credential that I provided, it would be much faster. Uh, it looks like, oh, and it's also, and, and in that invoke command, it's also having to load the Active Directory module. So, it does that twice. So, yeah, we're talking about a, good amount of time and with any luck it looks like it's in the set if this doesn't work I'll see if Don will take this out of the video <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look there we go everyone now has that's not a good thing by the way but everyone now <laughs> has the ability to reset the password nice. so just for limited user yeah yeah just for limited user nobody cares about that guy anymore so, any questions? All right, well, if you, if you guys have suggestions or anything, you know, come find me afterwards. Uh, and yeah, I, I do plan in the next couple of weeks uh, to get this stuff up on GitHub, like the actual source code itself, get a good build process. I'm not actually a developer, I, I just play one on the weekends. So, all right, well, push the button.